I am positive that I, I am positive I am positive that Mr. Trump greatly appreciates the reception that you have just given him this afternoon. I, as and during my 40 years as a coach, the thing that I wanted to concentrate most on, on was winning. This guy is a winner plus. And with that, within his first administration, he will take us right to be where we want to be, where we belong to be. And I say this for one last thing. One last thing. There is no bullshit with Donald Trump. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. What a man. Nine hundred victories Bobby had. Three national championships. Last undefeated team, Olympics, Pan Am Games, Bobby Knight. Thank you, Bobby. You know, when I wanted to win the great state of Indiana, a friend of mine said, any way you can get Bobby Knight to endorse you. When I got Bobby Knight, that was the end of that, I'll tell you what. In eight days, we are going to win the great state of Michigan, and we are going to win back the White House. Real change begins with immediately repealing and replacing Obamacare. It's a disaster. It's just been announced that Michigan residents are going to experience a massive double-digit premium hike in Obamacare. I will not tell you the number, I know the number, but I want everybody to leave here happy. But you'll be happy because we'll repeal it, we'll replace it, we're going to get you something so good. So much less expensive, so much better. You know, it's called, it's better and less expensive. That's a good combination. In Arizona, the great state of Arizona, great place, just left, premiums are going to surge 116% next year. In Minnesota, where the premium increase will be close to 60%, the Democratic governor, they're not happy about this, but he said it, he just said, the Affordable Care Act is no longer affordable. Hillary Clinton wants to double down on Obamacare, making it even more expensive. In fact, much more expensive than anybody even in their wildest imagination thought possible. I want to tell you something. Her biggest problem right now is not Obamacare. Do you agree with her? She's got other problems. I'm asking for your vote so we can replace Obamacare and save health care for every family in Michigan and in our country. Real change also means restoring honesty to our government. As you know, the FBI has reopened its investigation into Hillary Clinton. And has discovered another 650,000 emails. Then you wonder why things don't get done in our country. How do you do it? This is the biggest scandal since Watergate. Hillary Clinton wants to blame everyone else for her mounting legal troubles. But she has brought this situation onto herself. She's got nobody to blame but herself. 
Hillary is the one who set up an illegal private email server in a closet to shield her criminal activity. Hillary is the one who engaged in a corrupt pay-for-play scheme at the State Department. And now there are five FBI probes into the Clinton Foundation and their pay-for-play activities. Hillary is the one who sent and received classified information on an insecure server, putting the safety of the American people under threat. Hillary is the one who lied to Congress under oath. She lied about turning over her work-related emails. She lied about sending classified information. And she lied about using only one device. In other words, she lied. And she lied. Man, does she lie. All right, get him out of here. Get him out. A paid protester. A paid protester. Did you see on Wikilinks? Oh, the great thing. Look, the cameras are actually looking over there finally. They never want to show the massive crowds that we have. Look at that. Did you see where on Wikilinks it was announced that they were paying protesters to be violent? $1,500. I wonder if that's one of them. No, it doesn't look too violent to me. Doesn't look violent to me. Hillary is the one who lied to the FBI and then pretended she couldn't remember 39 different times. Hillary is the one who made 13 phones disappear, some with a hammer. Hillary destroyed 33,000 emails after getting a subpoena from the United States Congress. Think of that one. I have a feeling in the 650,000, you're going to find the 33,000. It's looking like. And it just came out to me, this is so bad. It's so bad. But it just came out, you see Donna Brazil was fired from the network. For giving, for giving crooked Hillary the answers and the questions to a debate. But the media, which is one of the most dishonest groups of people ever, ever, ever you're ever going to meet. They don't say, who cares about Donna Brazil? Who cares? What I care about is Hillary Clinton gets the questions to a debate. That's a big deal. And then what happens is the media, they never say, why didn't you turn it in? Why did you use those questions? She used the questions now on numerous occasions because this just came out today. This is in addition to the other day. So nobody's saying, why did Hillary Clinton not turn it in? You know, I have a son named Barron, and I want to tell you, she is a terrible example for my son and for the children in this country. That I can tell you. <laughs> Hillary is the one who broke the law over and over and over again. And by the way, we don't forget, we do want the answer to that question, media. Ask her, why didn't she say that she had the questions to the debate? I hope you're going to be able to give us that answer. They're worse than she is. By the way, did you see another one? Another one came in today. This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove. Another one came in today where various networks, a lot of them, were sending stories and sending, what do you want us to say here? What do you want us to say there? What should we do here? What should we do there? You believe it?
It's a rigged system, folks, and a big part of the rigging is the media. I will tell you right now. It's a big part of the rigging. Big part of the rigging. It's a big part of the rigging. Among the most dishonest people you'll ever meet. Hillary is not the victim. The American people are the victims of this corrupt and rigged system. And on November 8th, that's your chance. We are going to change it. Hillary Clinton is a dishonest person. And you know what? It all shows there's so many things. But getting, I'm serious about this, because somebody said, oh, maybe that's not that big a deal. To me, it's a big deal. Getting the questions to the debate, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And not turning yourself in. And if they fire Donna Brazil, why aren't they firing Hillary Clinton? Why is she allowed to run? Hillary Clinton is unfit and unqualified to be the president of the United States. And she's likely to be under investigation for criminality for a very, very long time to come. One of her longtime supporters, a top Democratic pollster and a very respected man, Doug Schoen, is now withdrawing his support from Hillary Clinton. He wrote a recent article. He said, I'm a Democrat. I work for Bill Clinton, but I can't vote for Hillary. He went on. I'm now convinced, so important, folks, this is so important. Because our country has enough problems. He said, I'm now convinced that we will be facing the very possibility of a constitutional crisis with many dimensions. And, and you know, this is so true. Deleterious consequences should Secretary Clinton win this election. In other words, we're going to be tied up in court for the rest of our lives with this deal. She's not going to win the election, but I'm just saying. If Hillary is elected, she would be under protracted criminal investigation, likely followed by the trial of a sitting president. This is just, hey, this is just what we need. Just what we need. And let me tell you, folks, let me tell you the way life is. They just found the 650,000 emails. One email, one email being classified or confidential, one out of 650,000. I guarantee you there are many. Many of the emails that were missing are in there. Thank you, Uma. Thank you, Uma. Do you think right now that Hillary Clinton is happy with the services of Uma? I don't think so. I don't think she likes Uma. And I never thought we'd be saying thank you. To Anthony Weiner. Never. Th thank you, Anthony. I never liked you, Anthony. I never liked you, but thank you very much. And I don't know, they don't give me much credit, but it's called good judgment. Do you notice I've been calling Anthony Weiner for the last year? And I've been saying, you can't allow somebody so close to the seat of power to be in any way associated with this guy. And you know what the press said? How dare you say that? That's such a horrible, give me a break. Now they're all saying he was right, but most of them don't want to write it. The investigation will last for years. Nothing will get done. Government will grind to a halt and our country will continue to suffer. Hillary's corruption is a threat to democracy. And the only way to stop it is for you on November 8th to show up at the polls and vote. We'll stop it fast. And you know what, folks? We have a movement, the likes of which they've never seen in this country. All of these dishonest people back there, they even say it. 
It's the greatest such event. I mean, they say, they say, Bill O'Reilly said, they all say, it's the single greatest political phenomena, Bill O'Reilly said, in his life. Now, he's a tough guy, he's a smart guy, but it's the single greatest political phenomena in his life, and others have said the same thing. Even people that hate me have said the same thing. And by the way, just a little bit of news. So, you know, you've been seeing polls. So we're winning almost everywhere. And the reason I'm here, you know, a Republican hasn't won like in 35 years or something, the state of Michigan. But remember this, I've been with you for two years. I've been making speeches in Michigan for two years. And you know, outside we have more people. This place is packed, right? Look at the door. Outside, thank you to the fire marshal, by the way, he was great. But outside, we have more people than we have inside. There's thousands of people outside. But I've been talking to the people of Michigan for two years. I've been saying it for five or six years, but I've been making speeches up here for two years about your automobile industry and other industries, but in particular, your automobile industry being sucked into Mexico. You know, Ford just announced their big withdrawal. They're going to make all their smaller cars in Mexico. They, that's on top of a plant that they just finished, two and a half billion dollar plant they just finished. Folks, I've been talking about this problem for years. She comes up, I've been talking about it for many years. This has been happening for many years, but I've been talking about it for years. But I've been making, who has been like at my speeches over the last couple of years up in Michigan? Is that right? I, I, I'm telling them. And you know, I'll tell you again, right now as we're here, you have the leaders of companies negotiating right this second to make deals to move out into Mexico and other countries. And if I win, they can forget it. Those deals aren't worth the paper they're written on. So we had some great polls. Now, Michigan hasn't been, what is it, like 35 years or something like that. No Republican has won since like Reagan or some many years ago. And I said, I love Michigan. And I saw numbers. No, no. I also said, look, I'm the one. Like I predicted UMA. I predicted uh, take the oil. I predicted a lot of things. You've been saying it. You know, Hillary has bad judgment and bad instincts. How about this guy, Podesta? Podesta, he's a nasty guy. Everything he says about Hillary is so bad. He said she has terrible instincts. But we have good instincts. And I've been saying, your car industry is being sucked away from Michigan. It's happening. If I'm elected, you won't lose one plant. You'll have plants coming into this country. You're going to have jobs again. You won't lose one plant. I promise you that. I promise you that. And if Ford and the other ones haven't started building their plant, they'll be back, believe me, before they start building their plant. Believe me. But the polls have been great. So what happened is Michigan hasn't been won in many, many years, decades. And I said, well, wait a minute, why aren't I doing well in Michigan? They said, you are. You're even. I said, even. Even? Why am I even? See, my people, because Michigan hasn't been won in decades, they thought even was good. I don't think even's good. I'm going to bring you jobs back, folks. Hillary doesn't have a clue. And she's going to have bigger problems than bringing your jobs back, I'll tell you. But she doesn't have a clue. She's not bringing anything back. She's the one that let him go, her and the, the group. They let him go. You know what? During the debate, did I win the debates, by the way? Won the debates easily. But during the debates, she'd say, I'm going to get ISIS. I'm going to this. I'm going to that. I'm, I kept saying, why didn't you do it? Donald Trump used the tax code to his advantage. So change it. Why didn't you change it? Why didn't you change Change it, right? Change the tax code. But she wouldn't do that because all of her rich guys that are supporting her, they're no different than me. They do the same thing. So she's not going to change anything. You know, it's called a politician. All talk, no action. So what happens 
is I get this poll and it says we're doing well in Michigan. Well, not for me well, but for all the geniuses that work for me. They say, oh, well, you're even in Michigan. So I say, let's go to Michigan. We just left. We just left another place. I said, let's go and win it. Because I will bring your jobs back and I will keep companies from leaving Michigan, firing the workers, opening plants in Mexico and other places. And if they do, like in Indiana, you have carrier air conditioning, you have Ford here, you have so many. I could name, I could name companies all day long, right? We lost 70,000 factories since essentially NAFTA. 70, who would believe 70,000? But here's the story. If they want to leave your great state, if Carrier, as an example, is going to leave Indianapolis, Indiana, if you're going to lose your car companies, and you're going to lose them, believe me, you're going to lose them. You're losing them as we speak. I'm going to tell them very simply. Here's the story. Enjoy Mexico. A little hot. I like the people. I met with the president three months ago. Good guy. But if you think you're going to fire all your workers in Michigan, you're going to open up a car plant in Mexico. Nice new factory. Good luck. And then you're going to make cars and you're going to sell them across what will be a very, very strong, powerful border. Believe me. I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them there will be consequences. There will be consequences. Thank you. By the way, I'm going to talk about the wall a little later, but just to keep you not in suspense, we will build the wall. Mexico will pay for the wall, believe me, 100%. So I thought I'd come here. And they all say, oh, don't do that. 32 years, 35. I said, I'm going to win Michigan. I'm telling you. I'm the only one that's going to bring their business back. I'm the only one that's going to get rid of all these ridiculous regulations. I'm the only one that's cutting taxes. She's raising taxes. And in all fairness to the companies, they're fleeing because of taxes. We're the highest taxed country in the world. I said, I'm going to win Michigan. So let's see what happens. Okay? Let's see what happens. Now, on a nationwide basis... We're winning nationally. We're winning in Ohio. We're winning in Iowa. We're winning in North Carolina. That one just came in. We're winning big in Florida. We're winning by four points in Florida. You know, they give you phony polls, folks. Phony polls. So I've been hearing about Texas. Texas and I, we have a great relationship. But they're saying, Texas is close, Texas. So the other day I'm watching one of the networks and a guy calls in, great guy, Sid Miller. I don't know Sid Miller. He's got a big cowboy hat on, great guy. Big white cowboy hat. I said, where do you get that hat? And he calls in, he goes, you know, I don't know what you people are talking about, but I'm from Texas. And we have more people voting than I've ever seen in my life, early voting. He said, they're coming from all over the state. We've never seen some of them before. They haven't voted in 20 years. Some of them haven't voted at all. And they've got Trump stickers on them and shirts and hats. And he said, now you're saying it's close in Texas, but you're a bunch of liars. It's not close. This is a total wipeout in Texas. And that's what I, that's what I thought. And by the way, the same exact thing is happening in the great state of Florida. Florida, they have lines that are four blocks long. If you went there four years ago, they're like two people waiting to vote and they're falling asleep. They have lines that are four and five blocks long. I passed one two days ago. I was in Florida and I say, what's going on over there? I thought it was like a concert. It's people waiting for hours and hours to vote. So there's a great thing happening in our country, folks. It's called common sense. It's called build up our depleted military. We need it so badly now. It's called save our Second Amendment. When we close the chapter on the Clintons, 
we can open a bright new chapter focused on the American people. My contract with the American voter begins with a plan to restore honesty and accountability to government. Have to have it. I want the entire corrupt Washington establishment to hear and heed the words that we, not me, we, have to say. When we win on November 8th, we are going to Washington, D.C., and we are going to drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. You know, I told a couple of groups that it's like started a week ago. I hated it. It sounded so hokey. Drain the swamp. You have to be kidding. Drain the swamp. So I said, you know what? Maybe I'll try it. So I was with a big, big group, a tremendous group of people, actually in New Hampshire. And I said, drain the swamp. The place went crazy. So I liked it a little better. Then I did it again and again. And now everyone's screaming, when are we draining the swamp? What are we? And I tell the, the story, I knew Frank Sinatra. Drain the swamp, 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 then it goes out, it becomes the number one song. All of a sudden, he loved it. That's with me, Drain the Swamp, okay? I love it. Well, it's very descriptive. Because it is. It's a dirty, rotten, stinking swamp. WikiLeaks, and this you just saw, WikiLeaks also just released an email with Bill Clinton's chief of staff telling John Podesta, foreign government donors, dash, all the money is in. That should be, you know what? That should be our next phrase. All the money is in. All the money. This is from foreign governments. He doesn't mean taxes. No, he means the money going into their bank accounts. All the money is in. That's pretty good. I like that one. All the money is in. So that was just another one of WikiLeaks. I'll tell you what. But they are nasty to Hillary. You know, for a person that's supposed to be a leader, she's not a leader. But boy, do they speak badly, every one of her people. Bad judgment. She's got nothing going. Hillary Clinton put the office of Secretary of State up for sale. And if she ever got the chance, she would put the Oval Office up for sale, too, and very quickly. My ethics reform plan includes a pledge to get foreign money out of American politics. Going to have to do it. Why do you think they're making all these incredible deals in China and Mexico and all these countries? Why do you think? Do you think because the politicians are that stupid? Some of them are. But you want to know? They have total control over our politicians. We have to get the money, foreign money, out of our politicians' pockets. My contract also includes a lifetime ban on government officials becoming lobbyists for a foreign government. That includes a ban on former White House officials lobbying on behalf of a foreign government during trade negotiations. You know, when you look at these horrible trade deals, they're not that stupid, I'm telling you. These are just bad deals because the other side, the side they're negotiating with, is taking care of them, folks. You know what? Look, I was on the other side, in case you haven't heard. I spent a long time on the other side. But I love this country so much. And I saw what was happening. And the day I announced on June 16th of last year, boy, did I become an outsider. I think I became the all-time, the all-time outsider. And I'm very glad I did it because this is something, again, this is something that has never, ever happened before or never close. And we're going to carry it home on November 8th. At the core of my contract is my plan to bring back your jobs. Nobody even talks about that. You don't have politicians talking about that. Michigan has lost one in four manufacturing jobs 
since Bill Clinton signed NAFTA. You know, it was Bill Clinton that signed. A lot of people don't know that. A deal strongly supported by crooked Hillary. Before NAFTA went into effect, there were 280,000 auto workers in Michigan. Today, that number is down to less than 160,000 workers, and it's going down fast. Under NAFTA, we eliminated our tariffs on Mexico, but Mexico raised their VAT on us. It's a VAT tax. A lot of people don't know what that means. It's now around 17%. So when we send products to Mexico, we pay a 17% tax. We don't even know it. In other words, when they signed the original agreement, it was defective. So instead of changing it, they don't change it. It was defective. We're changing it. We're going to probably terminate it and start all over again. You want to know the thing. It's got to be a two-way road, you know, two-way highway, back and forth. Right now, it's a one-way highway right into their pockets. But when they ship products to us, they can send them tax-free. You understand that? It was a defective because we have two different tax arrangements. So you have the VAT and ours is ours. It's a 17, approximately 17 percent. So the agreement was defective when we made the agreement. Everybody knew it and nobody changed it. And that's why you don't see the stuff coming the other way. It's a one-way highway. They get the jobs. They get the money. They get the factory. We get the drugs. We get the unemployment. We get the losses. Somehow, somehow that's not too good. America is running. America is running a nearly $800 billion annual trade deficit. In other words, our great negotiators, we're losing in a trade deficit $800 billion almost a year. We're living through the greatest job theft in the history of the world. True. It's the greatest job theft. You look at New England, you look at Michigan, you're one of the greats. You look at North Carolina, you look at all of our states. Some are affected incredibly. He just shouted out Ohio. Ohio's lost tremendous numbers of great jobs. You look at what's going on in Cleveland, Ohio, where we had an unbelievable convention, by the way. But you look at what's going on in Cleveland, Ohio, company after company leaving. Our trade deficit with China grew almost 40 percent during Hillary's tenure as Secretary of State. Her trade deal with South Korea, her baby, Killed another 100,000 American jobs. She, she said, oh, come on. Hey. <laughs> my, hey, hey. My man needs a break up here. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, he's never going to wear out. He's never going to forget about all of us. And I want to tell you this fact, too, before, just to give him a little bit to rest here. How many of you, how many of you have ever been in the armed forces, Army, Navy, Air Force? Raise your hand. Any of you that have been there? How many of you have a parent, a son, a daughter, whatever, in our armed forces? Is there any organization in our country that deserves the absolute best, the absolute best treatment that we can give, is there any organization more important than our military? This man will see that our military will be always the best in the world. They will have the best conditions. They will be the most highly thought of organization in the United States. And he will see that our military is able to protect us from any problems that might arise anywhere and will protect your sons and daughters who are in the military. He's a great one. 900 wins. Thank you, Bobby. That's true about the military, and it's true about the veterans. We're going to take care of your veterans. Hillary got rich selling you jobs, the same special interests who pushed the jobs out of America, the people who have given her countless millions of dollars in campaign contributions. You know, in Florida, it's 50 to 1, they say, commercials. 50 to 1, and I'm winning. You know, in the old days, 
In the old days, you'd get credit if you spent less money and you won. Today, they're saying, why isn't Trump spending more money? 50 to 1. I'll have over $100 million of my money in this whole campaign, which means I don't have to take it from others. But think of it. 50 to 1. She raised, I don't know, a billion and a half dollars, something like that. And we're winning, folks. We're winning. Can you believe this? 50 to 1. I was down in Florida a couple of days ago. I was begging for an ivory soap commercial, anything. Because every commercial was about Trump, negative. And by the way, really negative, nasty commercials. And they were so untrue. Most of them. Most of them. No, they were untrue. But just look at the devastation. Delphi laid off your area. 3,627 workers right here in Michigan. Most of those jobs went to Mexico. Leo Interiors laid off 320 Americans making automobile interiors. Their jobs went to Mexico. Congratulations. Bentler Automotive laid off 233 Americans and sent those jobs to Mexico. Steelcase also laid off 870 workers. Those jobs went to Mexico and Malaysia. Auto dye, once the biggest tool and dye maker in the United States, one of the biggest in the world, laid off 300 workers, getting smaller all the time. The sheet metal parts and dyes they used to make right here, they used to make them right here, now come from China, South Korea, and Taiwan. Ford laid off 2,155 workers. Those jobs went to various countries but they're going to be going to Mexico more and more and more. Ford is moving all of its small car production, that's a big deal, to Mexico. And that's on top of the two and a half, you know the plant they built, right? They built this massive plant. They built a plant that you wouldn't believe in Mexico. That's on top of it. A Trump administration will stop the jobs from leaving America and will stop the jobs from leaving Michigan. And I've been saying that for a long time. From now on, and I mean that, folks, and, and folks, folks, it's not even tough, okay? It's not even, it's not like, gee, you know, you've been watching, I've been watching for 10 years, these politicians talking about how do we stop the outflow of our jobs and our companies leaving? And they'd give them interest-free loans, and they'd give them all sorts of stuff. They didn't need money. They don't need interest-free loans. They have cash. But I've been watching it for years. And the one thing they don't do, they say, hey, you do this and there's going to be consequence. You do this, you're going to have consequence. If you want to take your, fire all your employees, it's called consequence. From now on, it's going to be America first. If Ford or another company announces they want to move their jobs to Mexico or another country, then I will pick up the phone, even though it's not very presidential for me to be calling the head of a company, but it's so easy. I will call the executives, or I'll have Carl Icahn do it, or I'll have, we have so much incredible, the top business people in the world, some of them. And I will tell them, and I have Bobby Knight, I'll have Bobby Knight make the call. I'll have Bobby Knight. I think he could make the call better than anybody. 900 wins, Bobby. He's amazing. I'll have Bobby. Know. Would Bobby do a good job? I think so. I will tell them that if they want to do that, they want to move all those, you know, people out of there and they're going to be unemployed now. And you want to hire other people from another country. We will charge a 35% tax when they try to ship their products back across what will be a very strong border. It used to be the cars were made in, you remember this, right? Do you remember this? It, you're right. You've heard this. I love it. It used to be the cars were made in Flint. And you couldn't drink the water in Mexico, right? Now the cars are made in Mexico and you can't drink the water in Flint. But we're going to turn it all around. I was in Flint recently. That is a troubled place, I want to tell you. You talk about incompetent politicians. They take good water and they say, let's give them bad water. 
They have clean water and they say, let's go to another source where it's bad. Who are these geniuses? Look at the city of Detroit. It used to be the manufacturing hub of the world. Now nearly half of Detroit residents do not work. It has the second highest violent crime rate in the United States. And the children are trapped in failing government schools. Yet, as the people of Detroit suffer, Hillary wants to spend trillions of dollars on government benefits for illegal immigrants and refugees pouring into our country. We are going to rebuild Detroit, and we are going to rebuild Michigan. Going to bring your jobs back. It's time to put America first. We're going to put America first. That includes a promise to cancel billions in climate change spending for the United Nations. A number Hillary wants to increase and instead use that money to provide for American infrastructure, including clean water, clean air and safety. That's what we want. We're giving billions and billions and billions of dollars, President Obama, giving billions and billions of dollars. We don't even have any idea where it's going. And we owe, to, you know, we owe, we owe 20 trillion, right? 20 trillion.